uh, <laughs> Hello? Yes, Jack Hall? Hello? Hello? Welcome, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody found your seat. I don't see that many free chairs. So the rest of you, if you uh, want to stand outside, please do so uh, at a proper distance or go catch the stream on your laptops. Uh, as long as you, uh, you don't bunch up, then we are happy. So, welcome everybody to Bornhack 2020. It, uh, <laughs> it is fantastic to see you all. Uh, we've been here since Thursday. Uh, the most of the uh, Orga team and uh, a bunch of volunteers and a growing number of volunteers over the days. And, uh, and today, of course, has been full of people arriving, uh, old and new faces, and uh, it is just wonderful to see everybody and that in spite of everything that has happened this year, that we can still have, um, though at a reduced size, uh, what, it, uh, what uh, promises to be an awesome event. So um, welcome everybody. Uh, we'll do, uh, like we've done before, if you've been here before, uh, a quick Hello World presentation where we talk about the venue and uh, of course we're going to talk a, a bit about uh, corona stuff and we represent some teams and what's going on during the week and uh, all kinds of things uh, other than that information can be found on our website we have a, a pretty comprehensive info page with uh, with all the details about how to how to be a, a, a visitor at bon Hack and um, and how to what what uh, what we offer various uh, facilities and uh, stuff like that. So, without uh, further ado, let's uh, let's get going. We have for a while uh, not been quite sure whether uh, whether Born Heck would happen at all. Uh, so uh, it is uh, pleasing to have a fifth anniversary, although it is smaller than we would have hoped. Then um, then you're all here to celebrate it with us, and that is fantastic. Um, if you were here during build up, thank you immensely for your help. It is, uh, we know it takes some, some time out of the calendar and maybe some extra holidays and stuff. And uh, it's a lot of hard work and it has been pretty sunny and uh, <laughs> hot to carry around uh, tables and chairs and building tents and all that. It, uh, it helps tremendously and it uh, makes, uh, makes the organizing team uh, full of energy and, uh, and uh, desire to, to keep doing this because we, we get so much help from all you wonderful build-up people. Um, we still have a lot of stuff that needs doing. Uh, most, most of the big stuff works, like we have power all over the venue, we have internet and stuff like that, but there's a ton of little things. And if you notice anything, you can report it uh, in different ways. We'll get to that. But, um, but for now, the things we do know need fixing, but we just haven't gotten around to, or we just need more hands or fresh hands, uh, people who haven't been working for uh, four or five days in the sun. I, it doesn't have to be a big job, but sometimes when you've been working for a while, it can be a, a big task just to do a 15 minute job that takes two people. So we have a, a whiteboard by the info desk. Please go there, check. Uh, it has a a list of jobs that needs doing, how many people to, uh, to, to you need to do it, how long time to expect uh, to do it, and, uh, uh, and a contact person. And it's uh, stuff like distribute soap to the sinks and uh, stuff like carry some pallets from A to B or some soda to the bar area, all kinds of little weird tasks. So if you want to help out, that is an excellent way to, to get started. Um, expect the venue to evolve during the week. We uh, sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. Um, don't have everything finished by now. The name of the bar is the work in progress bar because that is constantly evolving and, uh, and the venue is as well. So, so don't expect everything to stay as is right now. We, uh, we may surprise. So let's get, um, let's get this one out of the way. Uh, I'm sure you're all just about tired of hearing about this, but um, we're gonna go over it carefully and um, I'm sure we can all have a nice event without uh, any unacceptable risks. We, uh, 
we are having this in spite of of um, larger events being being cancelled, and uh, of course a, a twenty thousand people event uh, would m might well probably <laughs> would be a bad idea right now. But we are at a size where we feel, and at a, a venue that has a size where we feel that we can actually maintain proper distance, and we've taken a bunch of uh, precautions. Uh, apart from reduced participation, uh, of course, as you know, you were all lucky enough to get a ticket, uh, but not everybody was. Um, we have much more room between people in the speaker's tent, so if you want to bring three or four laptops, uh, now you can, and uh, sit there with the whole uh, setup. Um, we're getting more cleaning uh, from outside people, um, partly because uh, none of us are particularly interested in, in cleaning the toilets, and uh, partly because they do a, a proper job and they don't, they get a good night's sleep and they don't hang in the bar until 2 a.m. and have to get up and do it and stuff. So, so we want to make sure this gets done right. So they, they clean all the surfaces in the, in the food area and the workshop rooms and of course all the showers and toilets and that's done twice daily. Uh, in the camping areas, uh, we have plenty of room this year. We are not that many people, so please spread out. There's no, uh, no, no reason to uh, limit yourselves. If you want to build a village where you have some room between the tents, go right ahead. We have plenty of space this year. Please remember uh, the distancing. You've heard this a million times. Uh, make this a million and one then. Uh, keep your distance, uh, especially in the bar, and we are gonna, we are gonna be throughout the week reiterating this because th the bar is a place where people tend to uh, maybe sometimes forget the, the good habits, uh, of the good COVID-19 habits. So, um, so we're going to be uh, pretty strict about it uh, at the bar. All the seating is, is done with uh, proper distance between, so you can, uh, you can sit somewhere and talk and people can still pass without uh, rubbing against each other and stuff. Do not crowd the bar, do not hang out uh, like, like you sometimes would at a bar. Uh, the bar is for going to pick up drinks and then uh, going off to sit somewhere. Right, uh, and uh, the same goes in the food area. Uh, you you uh, should keep your distance. You should, of course, everybody <laughs> wash your hands. Uh, that always goes <laughs> when you're dealing with food, but in particular now, we have loads of sinks. There's uh, hand soap everywhere. Uh, we have loads of those um, huge, uh, uh, what's it called, disinfectant uh, pump containers, and you don't need a full, I mean, you'll get a, a proper handful. They are a bit, uh, so just a, a tiny squeeze will get you probably um, uh, clean. <laughs> um, right, and uh, wear a mask if you feel it's appropriate. We don't have a mask requirement. Uh, we feel that uh, if people are, are good enough at distancing, uh, they, uh, we'll leave it up to, to people. But especially if you leave the venue or if you're going to maybe a workshop where you're going to be I don't know, soldering and looking at each other's uh, whatever, then maybe consider wearing a mask. We sell them at the uh, info desk or you can uh, buy them yourselves. Uh, we have uh, disposable masks for 10 kroners that are from a Danish pharmacy, so they are, they are approved and proper disposable masks. Uh, they should be good for, uh, I think, a three to five hours use or something like that. And it's for 10 hacks, uh, 10 kroners or hacks. Um, please follow these guidelines. We have an extremely low tolerance level for, uh, for you know, like, uh, of course, there's no corona deniers here, but, but we, we, we really expect, we, we know, we, we love all you anarchists, like we put in a news post lately, but, uh, mm. but these rules you actually have to follow. Uh, we, we have no tolerance bullshit in this regard. And if you have any ideas how we can improve this, uh, we are not uh, health professionals. We've followed all the guidelines we've gotten from the government. We've done everything we can. But if you see an obvious uh, room for improvement and it's within, it's feasible to do and within budget and so we tried to get a test truck here from the from the uh, health authorities, but they said we were few too, too few people, and I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. But that uh, we any any ideas. Uh, Sure, bring, th bring them up uh, by all means. Let's uh, get that hacker ingenuity going. Uh, I know people have been 3D printing stuff. We even have a talk about that from, uh, from Jenny later in the week, I think. Uh, there. Um, and, um, and we think that's, uh, that's exciting. So if we can do anything, uh, then um, that would be a nice legacy to have for this uh, year's event. Okay, those of you who have been here before and uh, 
and especially new people uh, be aware we have a code of conduct. Uh, we've had it the same code of conduct since we began. We haven't made uh, any major modifications uh, to it. So please read it. It will be uh, posted around the venue and we have it on our website. And it is uh, important that you read, understand and always follow it. Uh, again, we have uh, no tolerance for, for harassment and, uh, and stuff like that. The things that are mentioned in the code of conduct a basic human decency and uh, we expect everybody to absolutely adhere to it i think that was all the uh, the serious stuff so that's uh, that's good to get out of the way right okay so volunteers i've already thanked the the build-up crew and uh, and we are very happy about that but uh, as the week uh, progresses we still have uh, lots of stuff to do and if you haven't joined the team uh, maybe consider going to the website and looking over the teams that need uh, help we have a bunch of them i'll, I'll i have a list uh, later with the, the ones that that need the most help but um it's a great way to meet uh, meet other hackers and uh, and a great way to help the event and offload some of the work from the organizers So we, uh, like everybody, have been hit a bit financially by the by the COVID-19 situation. We've had to cut maybe uh, three quarters of the tickets we would have normally sold uh, this year, or a bit a bit less, but still. And a lot of our expenses are not variable with the number of participants, like venues and stuff. So um, so this year we are especially dependent on our sponsors. Uh, many of these are. Uh, repeat sponsors uh, most of them have been here since the beginning actually and um, it, it says a lot that the the, the the sponsors that have been with here uh, with us since the beginning are also the sponsors that uh, that turn out to to still want to work with us during this uh, i mean every oh, almost every company has been hit financially by this and uh, so we are immensely grateful uh, please send them uh, happy thoughts uh, send them some business if you can uh, just uh, if you see Visitors from a, from a sponsor here, give them a, a a sanitary live long and prosper instead of a hug, but uh, but still buy them a beer or do something. Uh, they've uh, absolutely made this event possible. Uh, we would not be able to uh, to to let rent the venue and all that without uh, some help from these organizations. It is also worth mentioning that um, as a sponsor at Born Hack, you don't get any, uh, you cannot buy a speaker slot. Uh, you don't get any influence over the event in any shape or form. You get uh, the exposure and you get your name associated with the event, but you don't get any influence. If uh, a sponsor has a talk here, it's because the, the talk has been uh, weighed against the other content and found to be uh, worth having uh, regardless of the sponsorship. Uh, there's absolutely uh, no, uh, 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 interaction between those two teams uh, in that regard. But that being said, let's give a huge round of applause to the sponsors. <laughs> okay. So uh, we have a new uh, venue map on the website uh, and it will be evolving as we get more stuff put, up, put onto it. It is, it is uh, yeah, we haven't had it for that long, so we're still uh, getting used to using it. Uh, mostly you can go see where we have stuff like uh, toilets and showers and uh, power outlets and network. If you need your network cable plugged in and the, the markers on the map have uh, various colors and various information, you can see it all on the website. First things first, this whole area is uh, protected in some extreme degree that I don't even know the name of. Uh, so we have to be very careful with the venue. Uh, and in particular, there's something called uh, rich furrow farming uh, about 10,000 years ago where they dug these trenches and you can still see them in the landscape, especially up by the cabins. And uh, especially if you go to the to the map and turn on the, uh, the altitude map, then you can uh, clearly see those uh, those ridges dug uh, and uh, they are very protected so they are extremely sensitive about digging here so if you brought a shovel please put it in your car and do not dig anywhere <laughs> because they uh, yeah, they take that very seriously um, and and also of course 
no littering and generally uh, take care of this absolutely beautiful forest that we uh, we are uh, guests uh, in nature and uh, everybody is expected to act as such we have uh, three main uh, camping areas this year we've had to scale down a bit because of uh, the financial situation so some of the stuff you saw last year and some of the stuff that we will have next year if we are operating at full capacity we simply couldn't afford this year uh, so uh, the the the, uh, the areas we have are the the big general camping area that's by the info desk the the, the, the biggest uh, camping area here it's called general camping because it's just there's nothing uh, nothing um, no sp particular requirements or anything to to you can just put up your tent and, uh, and have a nice time there uh, and down by the behind the food area is the noisy area and if you like to combine camping with uh, loudspeakers and especially uh, if you like to turning them up loud then uh, that's the place for you um, you are allowed to make noise in the noisy area it is conveniently down between two uh, two hills so most of the noise don't go to the neighbors but uh, keep it still within a reasonable level uh, we don't want to bother neighbors even though they are far away from the noisy area noise still travels especially at night and uh, we don't want angry neighbors so uh, party away uh, play all the music you want but uh, within uh, you know not insane level please uh, where we had the family and the the quiet area last year we have uh, not been able to to find it in the budget to get infrastructure down there so there's no power and there's no wi-fi there's still running water but uh, but no power and wi-fi and you're very welcome to camp there but uh, but expect no uh, coverage but if you're only looking for a place to sleep and that'll probably be the, the quietest place uh, on the venue um, the parking area if you have a parking ticket uh, it's uh, on the left when you drove into the venue uh, it's hard to miss there's a bunch of cars there and there's a sign uh, pointing to it you need a parking ticket it's a hundred kroners and uh, please park in a sensible way down there and not, uh, yeah, so we don't have to have people move around we have a bunch of fireplaces on the venue it is uh, permitted to build a fire there you don't need a you don't need to ask anybody you go right ahead we love bonfires but we absolutely want to keep them in the designated fireplaces they are the orange markers on the map there's uh, four of them here and a uh, couple of them are really big and the other two are not so big but uh, they are they are there for the use and uh, we would love to see some uh, some bonfires around the venue uh, finally by behind the info desk is the Orga village it is uh, where we have all our stuff where we drive around with the uh, electric car and do stuff and we have meetings and it's also where the orga people live and um, we are not just orga we're also here to enjoy ourselves and we, we also need a bit of privacy for now and then so uh, if you can please stay out of the orga area it is uh, marked up with yellow tape and it's if you find yourself between containers and equipments and pallets and stuff then you are in the wrong place absolutely so uh, so please stay um, stay out of there uh, with with love and respect but but please stay out that's it uh, questions about the venue can go to the info desk um, walk around and see everything our light team has done an amazing job uh, this year getting everything ready uh, it, it truly is a one-man army so uh, he's worthy of uh, getting many beers and hails um, when the night falls uh, go around and uh, watch it and while i remember there's a Persades media shower this evening and uh, if it's uh, if there's no clouds you should be able to see a lot of uh, shooting stars so uh, if if you want that sort of thing right oh we hadn't uh, done all the boring stuff uh, there is the the little uh, nasty black creatures called ticks uh, in the high grass and uh, they are on this venue we know this and uh, do please check yourself they have a very small chance but they do have a chance of uh, carrying that uh, tick-borne encephalitis whatever it's called uh, a nasty disease um, and uh, and and you just basically need to check yourself and uh, they, they do tend to sit in the the moist little crevices of the body that are a bit difficult to get to but uh, maybe you can pair up two and two and uh, team up and check each other have a bit of fun <laughs> so um, check do check that and uh, contact the the search team or the info desk they have the special pliers you can use for removing them if you don't want to just use a knife or whatever you have handy 
Okay. Uh, right. The info desk. Like I said, it's by the uh, across from the main camping area, and we um, they they have some guaranteed opening hours between uh, 10 and 12, and from uh, 4 to 6, and in between there, they'll also be open, but they reserve the right to, if they don't have enough people and somebody needs to go to the toilet or get some food or something, then uh, they will close. Uh, but they, you can absolutely uh, visit the info desk from uh, 10 to 12 and 4 to 6. They are, apart from doing wristbands and all that stuff, which reminds me, I haven't uh, <laughs> got my wristband. If you don't have yours yet, then uh, do go to the info desk tomorrow uh, and, g and get it done. Uh, they also have a fridge with uh, some mate and some soda and some stuff. Uh, so uh, until the bar opens, uh, usually a bit later than that, then um, then you can go to the info desk for your cool beverages. Uh, the info desk needs additional help. It's one of the teams that are that have been hit a bit by Corona because two of our main organizers that are uh, the two normally the two main people taking care of the info desk, Ange and Vidya, are sadly both missing. Uh, they are not sick, but they are they they cannot be here. So, uh, and, and that just means that the info desk, uh, not only is it under new management, but, uh, but the team just needs people, right? So, so if you can um, sit for a few hours and, you know, sell tickets and uh, matter and uh, ch check people's wristbands and stuff, then uh, please go to the info desk and talk to the people sitting there. They would really, really love some help. Okay. So uh, the work in progress bar uh, is uh, coming along very nicely. Uh, I, I didn't have time to go down there the day before yesterday, so I had a, a full uh, maybe 36 hours away, and it went from being six pallets and almost nothing to being uh, the amazing <laughs> thing that bu they've built down there now. It is, uh, yeah, it is uh, always a work in progress, so it, so it keeps evolving, but uh, already we have something very nice. Please use the bar. Um, there's uh, shopping and stuff nearby, and you're welcome to go uh, buy your stuff there. But we need the profits from the bar to make this work. Uh, so uh, it's as simple as that. We have a, a carefully selected, uh, careful selection of uh, of special brew, uh, beers uh, chosen by some of our uh, beer enthusiasts is the word I think and um, and we have of course our custom like we always do our custom uh, vodka and our custom hakvit. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and of course, since this is the fifth anniversary, you will need a bottle to collect the whole set. So uh, so absolutely, do get a, a bottle of that as well, uh, or or more than one. Um, we have to have last call at uh, two because of the permits from the police, and um, that means uh, after two, we are not allowed to sell alcohol anymore. Uh, you don't have to vacate the bar. We don't have to close the bar. We just cannot sell the alcohol. Uh, so. Uh, if you go buy something at uh, 150, then uh, feel free to hang around. Right. Um, the venue map has the location of all the power pups. Uh, please help yourself to the to power. Uh, they are covered by uh, a plastic bag to keep them out of the rain, which we hope won't come. But please uh, recover them when you when you've uh, plugged in your stuff. If you uh, see a power hub without a cover, or you see a power hub that don't, doesn't have power, or you see anything else wrong, then please, uh, if you see it without cover, just pull it over. Uh, generally, if you see something that's easy to fix, it's better if you just fix it than report it. But uh, if you don't want to or can't fix it, then we really want to know. We've introduced uh, the, the map I was talking about, and um, all the little dots on it have a feedback button. So if you click on a power distribution point, for example, you can uh, sub choose between some quick feedback options or write a message and uh, say, if it's a toilet, you can say there's no toilet paper or it needs cleaning, or if it's a power outlet, you can see, say there's no power or water has gotten in this, please help, or some such. Um, we're still getting the QR codes out uh, and stuff, but, uh, but the system is there to use uh, on the website, so if you know that something is wrong somewhere, go find the particular facility on the website, click feedback and submit it there. Uh, the QR codes are only for easy access when you uh, have your phone with you, uh, so. Right. Uh, the network team has been uh, amazing again this year, getting the fiber from a, a Global Connect uh, point of presence about 500 meters from here across uh, a big road. 
up a flagpole over the road, down another flagpole, and then in through a garden and in through a forest, over a hill, and up through the nature area, and uh, through main camping, and then up to the uh, to the little building by the food area where our network core is. Uh, they've distributed uh, network access points all over the venue. If you want Ethernet, you can just leave your cable and it'll be plugged in. And uh, if you um, if you uh, want Wi-Fi, there's a few different uh, SSIDs. And uh, I've been encouraged to ask you to use more bandwidth because we're not uh, using uh, all the, the uh, bandwidth we have. So uh, please knock yourselves out. Uh, go right ahead. I don't want to know what you're using it for at all. <laughs> um, the Uplink is uh, sponsored by uh, uh, Born Fiber, and uh, it goes uh, through our Global Connect, uh, the, the, the fiber itself, uh, the physical link. It's terminated at, uh, at Born Fiber uh, in Hoysostrup, and uh, it is routed through the internet via CDC. We have a permanent IPv6 allocation, and uh, we have a, a borrowed or uh, uh, IPv4 allocation from uh, from RIPE, both are routed through our own uh, AS number. Uh, it is all uh, lovely. On the on the public Wi-Fi, you get a public IP. There's no firewall or anything, so make sure you have that. But you should have that anyway, uh, <laughs> regardless of which network you connect to. Uh, the other 802.1x has uh, the fancy auth where you get the individual uh, encryption for you instead of WPA uh, or or clear text. And the bonehack net is for like tablets and stuff where you would like to have uh, the kind of protection you get from a normal net router at home where there's no ports open inbound. Uh, so you can uh, lock your yeah, tablet or phone on the Wi-Fi without uh, risking too much. Right, um, and then the NAC team would of course love to, to hear about problems or help you if you have uh, questions. Okay. So we have, uh, we of course generate uh, a lot of uh, garbage and we consume a lot of uh, liquids in the heat and that generates some empty bottles and cans. And we uh, are trying hard to label our trash cans so we uh, get it sorted properly. Uh, there's uh, trans bins for regular trash and then there's uh, one for uh, plastic bottles and cans. They go in one and it's only if they have the Danish VAT logo and it says it has the logo on the trash can. So if you don't see that, little circular arrow with the, uh, uh, the, you can see the logo easily, then please don't put it in because we will have to stand by hand and sort this after. So, and that it was a, it was a big toll on a couple of the organizers last year. Uh, we've tried to label it more carefully this year. Uh, when we say cans, we mean cans with the VAT logo, not a tomato can or uh, stuff like that. Uh, I realize this can be, uh, uh, I mean, not all countries have the same, uh, VAT and, re and return system, but uh, we, we, this is what we, we have in Denmark and we try to use it as much as we can. Then there's another bin for glass bottles with VAT. Uh, they go to different containers back to our VAT processing company, uh, so please don't mix them. Um, and then uh, a couple of bins for regular trash. If you see a full bin, please uh, beep the QR code and select this is full or needs emptying or whatever the option is, or uh, inform the uh, info desk if uh, you don't see a QR code or can't be bothered doing it electronically. We want to know anyway, but we would love to get all the feedback standardized in this system so we can easily uh, manage it and have some stats on it and stuff like that. Right, uh, again this year we have uh, bicycles that you are welcome to borrow at the info desk. Uh, you can use them to go grocery shopping, it's uh, three kilometers away. Uh, we even have a little uh, trailer for uh, carrying a kit or some groceries or something around. They have come with uh, helmets and locks and lights and everything. And we, um, we have a few different sizes and uh, they, they are very nice bikes. If you do, uh, you do, you go and borrow it, uh, bring it back in one piece and take care of them and uh, do go see this uh, lovely area, it is, uh, it is great. Okay, just a second, I need to wet my beak. Okay, we have a custom currency at Born Hack called Hex. Um, it is the only way you can pay for alcohol. We don't accept uh, Danish kroners, we don't accept card, we don't accept mobile pay or anything like that. Uh, the only thing we accept is hacks. Fortunately, you can buy hacks with the previously mentioned methods, so it all works out in the end. Um, you can buy them at the info desk or at the bar or online in our web shop. Um, 
if you buy them online, you'll of course have to take the order to the info desk to actually physically get them in your hand. Um, they can be used at the info desk to buy stuff or at the food vendor. Uh, Singular, we only have one this year, but uh, it, he is promising to be very nice. I went there twice today and I'm very happy. And uh, of course, in the bar. They look, uh, yeah, you've probably seen them or you will see them very soon. They are uh, brightly colored plastic tokens and they correspond to, to Danish kroners. So if something is, is 25 hex in the bar, it would be 25 kroners uh, if we didn't have the hex system. And if you're wondering why it doesn't have the system, then I can explain it some other time. <laughs> okay, as promised, a few teams uh, still need help. Uh, the info team, like I said, they, uh, they have been hit hard by some missing organizers. They would love for some people to, uh, to be able to, to, uh, to help them so they can leave the info desk once in a while. Uh, and uh, the video team is uh, particularly important this year because we have low capacity in the speaker's tent, so it's important that all the talks, or speakers who want to get recorded, can get recorded, and that requires some people uh, to join the video team so they don't have to sit up here all day, every day, the, the members they do have. So uh, it is uh, pretty easy, you get a, a thorough introduction, and, um, and as a bonus you get to see a lot of talks. So if you intend to see talks anyway, why not sit behind the camera and help uh, your fellow hackers that couldn't fit in the speaker's tent. I'm told that it's, a, it's an easy intro and uh, that it's, uh, it's absolutely manageable work. <laughs> Great. Okay, uh, the bar team still needs a few people, so if you uh, know how to tent bar, uh, in a, especially in a, in a hygienic way in uh, these times, then uh, the Sarah would love to hear from you. I think they need two people still. Uh, the food area team, I think they are finishing up down there, but they have, uh, they have, uh, they have needed some help during the day. So if, if you go there and see people working, maybe offer your help to get it, uh, to get it finished up and or, or the last will be done tomorrow. But uh, but the food area, for if you haven't been here before, is, uh, is where you can cook your own food and it's also where the food vendor is. We have uh, fridges available. There's still a, a lot of fridge shelves free, so you can uh, rent one on the website. You can go buy groceries, put your food in the fridge and light up a barbecue or a gas-powered uh, stove to, uh, to cook your food and uh, do the dishes when you're done, like you would at home, but in a group of hackers maybe. Um, it's a way to, uh, to, we know you have varying diets uh, and, uh, and some people just like to, to cook and like to, uh, to hack food and, uh, and we of course want to, uh, to support all we can. We even have a fridge down there for food sharing and some shelves, uh, so if you have something you know you're not going to use, then put it in the free shelf, uh, in the free fridge or in the shelves uh, and, uh, and, and also use the food. We, we want to minimize food waste as much as possible. And, uh, and not all people uh, come here with the same budget, so uh, have some rice or whatever left over, put it on the shelves, I'm sure somebody will, uh, will love to eat it. The sanitation team, uh, colloquially, colloquially called Team Shit, uh, also needs help. Uh, they don't actually deal with, uh, with uh, shit that much, it's mainly emptying the garbage bags. Um, but it is, I mean, it is taking shit uh, <laughs> that other people uh, somehow produced. But, uh, it has the added bonus of uh, riding around in the electric uh, golf cart, uh, which is pretty fun. So uh, if you're up for, for some trips around the venue to replace garbage bags with uh, full with empty and, uh, and drive around in a vest uh, playing, they see me rolling in the electric car, then uh, please uh, let us know and we would love to have your help for, for Team Shed. Right, um, all this is happening on the website. Everything almost happens on the website. So uh, if you haven't familiarized yourself with it, uh, go uh, log in and, uh, and check it out and uh, join the teams you feel could maybe use your help. And uh, this uh, slide also reveals that uh, I haven't actually made these slides myself because somebody snuck in a Microsoft Teams uh, logo over there. That's uh, <laughs> I didn't actually notice that when I was, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, well done, Lasse. <laughs> well. Oh, right, uh, the third team also needs help, uh, of course. I forgot about that. Um, they, uh, they take care of uh, little and, uh, and big issues. Uh, I have a slide about them later, but they, they, need, uh, they need people too. Uh, oh, actually, now. <laughs> 
Um, they uh, they wear orange vests. Uh, Orga wear yellow vests, and uh, the the uh, the third team and the photo team wear orange vests. Uh, they can take care of uh, ticks and uh, splinters and little stuff like that, or cut or bruise. Uh, and and of course more serious business, which we uh, really hope uh, that we won't get. Um, we have a hard starter in the info desk if uh, if anything really really serious happens. Uh, we have first aid kits uh, distributed around the venue, the info desk, speakers tent, food area, and uh, the cabins, cabin workshop area. Um, and tomorrow, uh, during lunch uh, at 12:30 uh, in the workshop rooms, there will be a third team meet and greet. So if you have uh, first aid experience, you've taken a first aid course within, you know, a reason reasonable number of years ago, then uh, then please we could use your help. You'll get a shift, and you'll have maybe eight hours where you have a radio and a bike and a vest, and you'll just uh, be ready to respond if anything happens. Uh, it is a very low stress job uh, with uh, occasional uh, high stress peaks, but uh, but m mostly and especially with this low number of people, there won't be uh, an insane amount of work. It, it will be ticks and splinters mostly. Um, so noon to our twelve thirty tomorrow in the workshop rooms. If you're interested in uh, in helping out the third team and uh, helping out your fellow hackers, feel safe. Okay. The photo team, uh, they will also wear orange vests to uh, to uh, distinguish themselves from uh, from the uh, from the organizers. They uh, respect the code of conduct, uh, which says, among other things, to not take pictures without everybody in the picture uh, previously having agreed for the picture to be taken. Which means basically no crowd pictures because it's just there's too much logistics in uh, <laughs> in asking everybody. So. Uh, I mean, we all want to document our wonderful experiences, and we all want to share uh, stuff with people at home. But if you take pictures, make sure there's no people on them, or you've asked the people on the pictures beforehand. And uh, that, of course, also goes for our photo team. Uh, we, of course, would love to have some awesome pictures put to put on our website and in our materials and flyers and stuff. Um, and the photo team has, of course, been briefed about this, and they will uh, ask everybody in a picture unless they know beforehand. I, I mean, if they've asked before and they know everybody in the picture is okay with it, uh, then they, they won't, but, uh, but they will uh, follow these rules. If you uh, have questions, you're welcome to ask the, the photo team people and uh, see their pictures if you are not sure if you were included in it. Uh, we, we fully respect people's privacy and uh, and also are not uh, crazy ourselves about having our pictures taken without without uh, our consent or permit so uh, so uh, yes of course we will respect this but that being said if you don't mind then please allow the photo team to to take pictures of you because there's so many cool situations in an event like this and people doing cool stuff and it is so hard to document without getting people's faces uh, so if you don't um, uh, really mind, then uh, please allow them to, to take pictures. Okay, we, uh, we, there was a deadline for ordering merchandise uh, some days back. Uh, and if you missed it, there is still a little bit uh, available in the web shop. Not many pieces of each size, but a few. And, uh, and if you hurry, you can get it. And if not, when it's sold out, it's sold out. We're not going to get any more. Uh, delivered or anything like that. There's no uh, late late order or second batch, and and there's no mailing merchandise to people because it's too much work. Uh, so um, we have some in the workshop. If you haven't ordered what you want, then uh, I suggest you go do it immediately after this. It will be available uh, from Friday afternoon. Uh, is the goal right now, uh, and the the people producing it might uh, adjust that later. But uh, but Friday is a is a good bet. Badges should be available tomorrow from 10 in the uh, the info desk. Uh, we are still not entirely clear if they are going to be free this year because we haven't found a badge sponsor and we are pretty pressed financially. So they might cost 50 or 100 kroners or hacks, uh, but we actually don't quite know yet. But they will be available tomorrow uh, from, from noon, whatever the price, but hopefully they will be free like they've been the other years and we will sort out the financial stuff later. Um, that's my hope, but I honestly don't know, and I'm the person who should know. Uh, I just haven't had time to actually sit down and take a, a good long look at the at the finances. So uh, remember to attend the, the batch talk tomorrow. It's at one uh, to two, and it is uh, usually lots of fun to hear how uh, batches are produced and what kind of hacking options it has. Uh, I hear this. Uh, 
I hear many interesting things about it this year, and uh, I'm very excited about it, but I will let uh, the batch team have been doing an immense amount of work to get everything working, and especially working around corona delivery restrictions and deadlines and stuff, getting stuff in from various countries, and China in particular is, uh, is tricky to say the least. And, um, and they have uh, gotten them produced, and they're working, and they are looking awesome, and the feature set seems awesome. But uh, I'll let them, uh, I won't spoil the surprises, so uh, show up tomorrow or stream it. And if you, if you don't have really feel strong feelings for a talk, consider staying uh, at home uh, in your tent with a laptop, and then having your fellow, uh, leaving the space for your fellow hackers. We have 60 seats here and 150 people in the venue. Uh, and. Uh, It'll, there will, of course, always be a few people uh, who can't go. So, um, so think twice before you go up here. We want to see a full send, of course, but we, we, you know what I mean. Uh, con consider, uh, consider leaving a space sometimes. Uh, and remember the batch talk tomorrow. It's at one. Right. I got to the end of my slides. I uh, have a couple of things that I didn't have time to put in them uh, because we were we it, we uh, got to it pretty late uh, before this so um uh, bear with me they are not in any particular order and i also need to uh, pass my own uh, writing so uh, right uh, the power team uh, like i said we haven't had uh, the the budget to to stretch the power installations all the way to the to what is now the nature area uh, this also means that we have some long stretches of cable, and this means that there will be voltage drops around the venue, particularly if anybody's powering up anything uh, particularly power hungry at the moment. Uh, we've heard reports of as low as uh, 180 volts, which is fine. <laughs> uh, we, we know it's not perfect, but uh, for normal I mean, for your laptops and stuff, it doesn't matter at all. Uh, a few things will have problems, but most devices will not have a problem at all. And I mean, it is what it is. It is what we could afford, so I'm sure we will make it work. If you have something important that doesn't work, then uh, uh, go to the cabin and plug it in. Power should be fine there. But I mean, you can charge your laptops and your phones, and you can get light in your tents and, uh, and stuff, and that is... With the budget the power team has had this year, it is nothing short of a fucking miracle what they've done. So they deserve a huge round of applause. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, a, a low voltage here and there, that is absolutely excused. Um, um, and jumping straight into something completely different, like I said, uh, when you uh, take a cup from the bar, please bring it back. <laughs> uh, I know it's a kind of random to say on the first day, but but we they already kind of detected a pattern. So uh, if you do get a get a draft beer and walk off with it, you're welcome to do that. But the glasses need to find their way back because we don't have an unlimited supply, even with this amount of uh, participants. We still have room for uh, lightning talks. So if anybody uh, maybe hasn't done a talk before, that's a great way to get started. Uh, if you uh, have a bit of stage fright, uh, it's only five minutes. You can do it about anything at all. It, it literally doesn't matter. It just has to be something you are passionate about. And it's a great way to get started on a stage. It's how I and I think most people started out with a small, oh, I'm going to go say something because I really need to get this uh, off my chest and tell, talk about a project or something I discovered while debugging something or whatever it might be, and um, and before you know it, you'll be doing uh, regular talks. You might also have a regular talk or, or not, but uh, be, you just have something that, that isn't a big enough subject for a regular talk. That's a perfect candidate for a lightning talk. So um, they can be submitted uh, on the website uh, through the regular channels, and uh, I'm told that the lightning talks have been scheduled later. Uh, I don't know what day or what time, but later in the week. <laughs> Um, right, then I have the, the media shower, but I already mentioned that. Uh, remember to, to look up if, I don't know if there's a cloud cover, but uh, the, the rest of the evenings have had beautiful, beautiful uh, cloudless, starry uh, skies. So uh, let's hope it's like that again this year. And I also mentioned uh, the speaker's tent, uh, don't crowd up outside. If you, if you don't have room uh, to get in and get a seat, then please go back down and turn on the stream on, the, on your laptop or go to one of the places. Uh, maybe we'll get some streaming up in the bar if you want to take that job and, and put up a screen and some stream streaming stuff. Please do so. Uh, like I said, if you see a room for improvement and you feel like you're able to do something, go to the info desk and, or, or just catch a vest and, uh, and, and talk to us. We would love to hear from you. 
it is a, a participatory event. Uh, you're supposed to, uh, to to enjoy being here, of course, and, uh, and and relax, but also give a hand when you can. You are hackers. You are uh, you doers. You know, you you don't just sit back, right? We uh, we we do stuff. We make stuff. We make stuff happen, and uh, that's what this is all about. Thank you all for uh, for showing up on this uh, on the in, in uncertain times. We weren't uh, sure this was going to happen, and uh, I'm sure you uh, were weary about getting tickets for an event. You weren't sure what's going to happen and all that, and uh, you placed your trust in us, and uh, we are going to repay that by uh, making a great event for you. So uh, thank you all, and uh, I'm looking very much forward to the next week. And remember to go to the bar and uh, spend some of your lovely money and talk and mingle, but do so at a distance. Please do not crowd the bar. <laughs> Buy something, then go away and sit down. <laughs> Thank you.